Hello there, my fellow spice addicts, and welcome back to some more lore from the universe of Dune. I know it has been quite a few weeks since I made a Dune video, but as you know, between my surgery recovery and my diminishing stash of emergency videos, I didn't have the time for any extra videos and I didn't have any pre-made ones either. Fortunately, today we are having some Dune lore, and I'm gonna do my best to do it next week as well. Regarding the topic of today, I think it is a very interesting and relaxing one at the same time. As we're gonna describe the planet of Ikaz and its many wonders. Unfortunately, there's very few pictures on these actual plants, so we're gonna have to improvise. I'm your host, the botanist GDN for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Ikaz, or the Greenhouse Planet, was first discovered in 8112 BG. It was listed as a usual nondescript planet with a humid atmosphere, moderate temperature, shallow inland seas, and two main continents, and a customary large variation between the equator and the poles. Ikaz soon became the fief of House Plana, and gained the reputation as a botanical wonderland. Its humidity, more than its warmth, accounted for its unparalleled profusion of plant life. House Plana did sponsor extensive research laboratories in an attempt to catalog and breed useful strains of the more intriguing plants. Unfortunately, their work came to a stop in 7033 BG, when Ikaz was the very first planet to suffer a general atomic attack before the Butlerian Jihad. This event, known as the Slagging of Ikaz, was an imperial answer to a burgeoning rebellion, and it resulted in complete destruction of all human artifacts. The weapons used were known as diggers, intended to blast out the deep strong points, and they caused radioactive byproducts so substantial that the entire planet was rendered uninhabitable. Even more important than the radiation, though, was the breaching of the formerly sealed botanical research and development stations which released mutagenic bacteria, viruses, and chemicals into the atmosphere. For many centuries, only the taller mountain peaks and the polar ice caps could be safely visited. In the lowlands, and especially around the former population centers, the residual radiation was so deadly that the planet would be uninhabited for millennia afterwards. Not until after the Jihad, in their desperate search for substitutes for the thinking machines and their products, was Ikaz once again explored, and never could the researchers imagine what they would find there now. The atomic release of the mutagenic microbes of House Plana had resulted in a flora run wild in the thousands of years of isolation. Most of the animal life on the planet was gone, except for insect life. In addition, there had been a complete elimination of hardwood plants and considerable dialed back among all the plants with life cycles longer than two seasons. But the niches vacated by the extinction of the more long-lived plants did not stay vacant for long. Entirely new forms of plant life developed on Ikaz. Many were totally unknown and so phenomenal that the explorers were ridiculed even after bringing samples. Although many uses have been found for Ikazian plants, there was never a full attempt to recolonize the planet. And House Zitan, who owns and administers Ikaz now, has stopped trying to keep a large station on the planet. Exploration groups are rotated off-world every week, after which at least a month of sterile room recovery is required. The expeditions are highly expensive to equip as well because every piece of equipment is likely to meet its match at least once while on the surface. The early explorers often scoffed at the idea that simple plants could cause such damage, until they found their gloss etched by acid mold, their metal devoured by rust root when left on the ground for more than five minutes, and their plastics dissolved and leached away by one of the dozen or more surprisingly active and very deadly plants. As mentioned, a great many useful plants had been discovered on the planet ever since the planet itself was rediscovered. But for today's purposes, we're only gonna go over a few. Namely, the Fogwoods, with their official name Lepidendralis mutans, the source of the Elaka drug and Semuta, Equisetales mesmeris, Plenicenta, or Rosa osmira, 
the source of the Sappho juice used by the Mentats from barrier roots, the drug Veritei from Isoetes Kertus, and the microscopic plants which are used in the production of glow globes. Out of all the plants on Ikeas, maybe the most popular is known as Fogwood. Fogwood is also responsible for Ikeas's other nickname as the Sculptor's Paradise. From the unique property of the fogwood to respond to human thought and to grow, influenced by the thoughts, into shapes evoking a similar mental state in any viewer. There are four main families of fogwood. Bradford, Lake, Tulei, and Spotted. Fogwood is a very common plant on Icas, occupying habitats ranging from the subarctic to the tropical. It has a very thick, soft trunk, reaching up to 20 meters in height, with a crown of forking branches extending another 10 meters. The root system of the plants is very extensive, ranging from several hundred meters around the parent tree and delving up to 100 meters underground. The leaves of the fogwood vary with the subtype, but they are always spirally placed and several times longer than they are wide, and they are so numerous as to completely hide the upper branches of the tree. The trunk and the stems are made up of a slender cylinder of primary pithy wood, surrounded by a much thicker layer which exhibits the special properties making fogwood so important, and which is in turn covered by a thin, elastic layer of smooth bark. The seed cones produced by this are large and awkward looking, and fogwood seeds have never been successfully germinated outside of the atmosphere of Icaz. The phloem layer of the fogwood is able, in some unknown way, to detect the thoughts of higher life forms. This development surely has no present evolutionary value though, because no animals other than insects inhabit Icaz. When exposed to consistent human thought over a considerable period of time, the adaptive phloem in the outer layer of the fogwood trunk will extrude, intrude and warp, precisely reacting to the thoughts. After some time, dependent on the age of the tree, the complexity of the sculpture, and the sculptor's willingness to cease refinement of the sculpture, the wood assumes a form which arouses thoughts in the viewer similar to those of the sculptor. When a fogwood sculpture has decided on a subject, he travels to the surface of Icaz and selects a suitable tree which he registers at the Sculptor's Guild in order to prevent mental contamination of the work. For his own protection, the Sculptor will place a dome around the tree and stays within a few meters of the work, thinking about what he wants it to look like. This, however, is not as simple as it sounds, since the Sculptor has to think, as much as possible, only of the topic he wishes to sculpt. At the same time, he has to contend with the planetary surface of Icaz, Amateur sculptures are named by the artist, but it is a mark of a sculptor's ability and self-confidence to release an untitled piece and have it pick up a name by popular agreement. Another well-known plant from Icaz is Elaka wood, or Equisetalus mesmeris. This is a small, hollow tree with jointed stems and large fork leaves. It is best known for its derivatives, the Elaka drug and Semuta. A Laka drug was actually discovered by accident during a re-exploration of Icaz. Members of the Voyun expedition would camp out in a stand of Elaka and use some of the dried stalks for campfire. When the expedition members noticed that they were developing an unusually orange-red flush, their first reaction should have been absolute panic. They were astonished to realize though that they had no craving for the safety of the shuttle or the base's medics. Instead, an utter disregard for their safety gripped them. For the first time since landing on Icaz, they were unworried that they might not get off-world. But the scientists didn't appreciate the danger of their state until an insect landed on an entomologist's arm, and he calmly waited for it to bore a hole in his arm so he could determine its effects on human physiology. Even after such a display, the others were unable to prevent themselves from similar reckless inaction. When the drug finally wore off a few hours later, three of the scientists were dead, and another four had severe infection. A Laka drug has few legitimate uses, because of the characteristic orange flush produced by the drug, and because of that it cannot be used discreetly. Generally, it is only employed to evoke an ersatz bravery among arena slaves and suicide assassins. 
Elaka did yield one more interesting recreational drug discovered in the past several thousand years, known as Semuta. This one is derived from fully burned Elaka ash through a process of crystal extraction, bringing about a feeling of peaceful well-being combined with an oral perspective of the outside universe. Plenicenta, or the green perfume flower, is a small delicate shrub with variegated leaves. Its blooms are a brilliant emerald green, and when taken from Ikeas and sterilized, decompose with a most exquisite smell. Plenicenta perfume has a benign psychomimetic effect. It overwhelms the olfactory nerves and causes localized synaptic responses which the brain interprets as incredibly pleasurable smells. The infamous Sappho, used by the Mentats, is extracted from the so-called barrier roots, which are in fact the roots of almost any plant growing at or near so-called slag zones, where ancient atomic ground blasts fuse the soil. Especially rich in Sappho are the barrier roots growing in deposits of peat or other soil unusually heavy in plant matter. Sappho is distilled by diffraction from the roots yielding about 1 liter of liquid for every 800 kilograms of root. The difficulty of mining on Ikeas and the finite area in which you can grow the plants keeps the supply of Sappho limited. As mentioned already, most of the users of Sappho are mentats, for whom the drug is a mental amplifier. Last but not least, we have the drug Verite, derived from the truth tree or Isoetes Kertus. This plant is from the same family as the fogwood. Verite was developed by careful experimentation with specimens of the then unnamed tree. After it was discovered, Verite enjoyed a brief popularity among younger members of the nobility, who thought it would be amusing to use it at parties. The practice ended very quickly though, when it was discovered that the drug actually acted exactly as advertised. Nowadays, it is only used in interrogation. And this, my friends and fellow botanists, is what I wanted to tell you about the wondrous garden world of Ikaz from the universe of Dune for today. If only we had more artworks of all these plants, but I guess I should be grateful we have any artworks at all. Pictures on Dune which don't involve deserts and sandworms are kinda rare. What about you though? Have you ever heard about the world of Ikaz? What about any of the famous plants from there? Which one did you find most interesting and why? Do share your thoughts in the comments below if you want. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please help out the series by watching to the end, liking, sharing, commenting and subscribing. Thanks a lot and may the blessings of Shai Hulud be upon you.